Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Bodo Sieber, CEO of Tag Marshall. Uh, very excited to have you with us today um, for our expert session, how FireRock and Whiskey Run have created exceptional play experiences while increasing efficiency through optimization. Play experiences, important, efficiency, important, optimization, important, making money is important. We're all in business, right? And I'm very excited to have uh, two expert guests, um, Amanda Cosettino and Duke Newland from FireRock and Whiskey Run. Um, how are you guys? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, doing great. Thank you for having us. Um, what I'd like to do, um, I also have Stephen Knurp, our Irish resident MD, but uh, he's keeping low profile. So if you want to pop in, Stephen, uh, because you are the uh, key um, relationship manager for us in Canada. Uh, what I'd like to do is get us started with a quick introduction to um, our two guests. Um, ladies first, obviously. So Amanda, why don't you do a quick <laughs> intro to yourself and your operation as well. Awesome. Well, nice to see everybody. Um, my name is Amanda. I've been with Fire Rock now for 11 seasons. This is going into my sixth season as director of golf. Um, I'm also a professor at Fanshawe College here in London in the golf management program. Um, so we are a now fully public facility. We used to have a membership, but this past year we have uh, canceled that. So we're just a public facility now. Um, we are a Tomic Room Design course, which attracts tons of people from all over um, the nation. Um, and we host a lot of great championships um, here at Fire Rock. So we're right off the, the 400 series highway. So we're very fortunate to get a lot of tourists also from the States um, before this pandemic, obviously. So yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little spot we have here. Um, thanks, Amanda. You look so young. How did you work there for 11 years? Get, tell us your secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, right out of, thank you. <laughs> this is a child, having a child uh, the past year as well. <laughs> um, lots of coffee. I started here in um, high school, actually. And so I started here in high school. And then when I was doing my master's degree, uh, the job opened up and the owner said, as long as you finish your master's degree, you're welcome uh, welcome to have this position. We think that you would fill it very well. Um, so golf has always been uh, what I've done. That's all I know. <laughs> um, nice. And that uh, segue so nicely into our other guest, Luke, uh, who rumor has it was born on the Whiskey Run golf course. Yeah, the ninth hole at nine. <laughs> so, well, I'll give a little history of Whiskey Runs and Whiskey Run Golf Club. We're uh, family owned and operated, uh, built in 1989 by my father. Uh, started nine holes in 92, we went to 18 holes in 97, we went to 27 holes. Uh, we're a semi private, so we do have members. Uh, the, the course gets its unique name. It's a pretty cool story. It's on a property that was actually used during prohibition during, uh, to bootleg booze across the border to the U.S. And the irrigation company that was actually putting in the irrigation um, uncovered a bunch of old whiskey bottles and ceramic and glass bottles and actually wrote on the top of the plans, Whiskey Run. And that's how the, uh, the name came about. You know, I've, uh, I've worked uh, in this, in the golf course for, uh, since I was seven, actually. So, and I've done everything from um, course maintenance, cutting greens, to tending bar, to serving up the barbecue, being a cart kid, to um, uh, my main, well, most of the time was spent in the pro shop, engaging with um, golfers and guests. And as of late, my main role has been in marketing and using more of the analytics to uh, drive our decision making. Fantastic. Love the, love the rebellion story that's behind. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, name. it's always great. Um, yeah, uh, brilliant. So um, if you'll allow me just uh, a quick introduction to what uh, Tag Marshall does. Um, let me find my slide. So um, we are a golf course optimization system, basically uh, traffic management, if you will. Uh, we now have tracked over 20 million rounds, collected way more than a billion data points. I feel we need to update this every time I'm I go online for a webinar because it keeps growing and uh, we work with uh, you know, a few over 350 clubs. Um, in Canada, um, we've got uh, yeah, quite a, a broad partnership base now with uh, Fire Rock Whiskey Run, but also British Green, 
um, Clovelly, Muskoka Highlands, um, St. Andrews Valley, Pine Grove. It's quite a few. I think our first customer was, was Woodland Sticks or Summit. Uh, so they're going quite a few years back. Uh, we're also very blessed to work with uh, some of the very best um, at your neighbors on the other end of the whiskey run <laughs> uh, down in uh, in the US. So that your your I think it's 30 of the top 100, um, including your uh, Winged Foot and Valhalla, Baltus Royal on the Oakmont uh, on a webinar with us recently on the private end, and then Daily Fee Resorts, the famous Pebble Beach, um, Erin Hills, our, our very first customer, Whistling Straits, who um, hosted uh, the Ryder Cup to an emphatic US victory just a few weeks ago. The year's just flying, isn't it? Um, and we're just yeah, looking to add value where we can. So we also take partners to the European tour and help the USGA and the RNA with data wherever possible. Um, and just really uh, keeping a very close connection to our partners so we can learn from them and, and make sure that uh, we give them what they need because we're not operators. We're just uh, uh, a tech company. So we want to provide a tool that makes your lives easier and your operations better. Um, so what we had to discuss today is uh, just a few uh, key questions. Which factors are key to creating exceptional play experiences because we're all serving players. Um, so we want to know what are they, uh, which ones matter the most, um, which new tools and processes have you at uh, Firerock and Whiskey Run implemented to optimize your operation? Has it enhanced the play experience? Um, how have the players responded? And how has operational and resource efficiency improved with this tech move on your side? So um, uh, Amanda, to get started, um, I would like to ask you a quiz question. I'm also going to ask our guests this question um on when it comes to player experiences and i know that you yourself um are uh, very familiar obviously with the golf operation side but um not a golfer yourself but you have obviously um served hundreds if not thousands of golfers over time so from what you've learned Plus, you're a scholar, right? Uh, from what you've learned, uh, what would you say are the top three experience factors for players um, out of this list, uh, including course design, conditioning, clubhouse amenities, place and flow of play, playing partners, accessibility, tee times availability, cost slash value? Um, what would be your answer? Which ones flow to the top, the top three? So pace and flow of play, um, that is number one for sure. I would say next would be cost slash value. And, oh, I just had the quiz pop up there. Uh, cost and value. And thirdly, I would say course conditioning. Um, okay. Pace and flow of play, value, and course conditioning. Um, from, on your, from your side, uh, Luke? Yeah, I'm, those would be the same three that I would pick. I'd go course conditioning, pace of play, and then cost value, for mm. sure. Um, mm. The... Yeah, but our, our crowd seems to agree <laughs> with course conditioning, pace flow of play, floating to the top, course design also important. It does pull a crowd, right? Like you said, uh, Amanda. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, interesting, how, how do we define value, right? Uh, especially when it comes to um, uh, pay to play golf, like how is value defined? And, and, and we're probably very quickly coming back to conditioning um, and pace and flow of play as well, right? Uh, because if those two things are done well, uh, that's normally value. And sometimes a uh, $300 round is fantastic value. And sometimes a $30 round is a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to do the right things for our, for our golfers, right? Um, let me just end the poll so you can see what has been submitted here just very quickly. Um, no surprises. Okay. Um, so let's jump ahead. Uh, so we want to always look at a bit of research, but before we do that, um, this is from the Golf Pass, which is part of the Golf Now's massive machine of uh, tracking golfer data, and 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 they're basically like the um, you know, sort of travel type rating for golf courses, and they have got the the very same attributes: conditions, value, layout, friendliness, pace and amenities and at the top here you see what a good rating look, looks like and at the bottom what a bad one looks like and and the worst out of these rankings is amenities and layout and pace so this is 
seems like a no hoping course. And and uh, because we as consumers have all the power, we're very much guided by these um, results, like wherever we go, right? So it's like, where should I play? I'm in town for the weekend, uh, which course should I pick, right? So uh, the good ones float to the top, the bad ones we then would try and avoid. Um, is this something that you guys are keeping an eye on at all? Like um, how you rated and ranked across these uh, these platforms? 100%. Yeah, definitely. Definitely always going to be keeping an eye on how you're being reviewed and how you're being perceived um, by the public. Um, definitely can uh, help drive where we uh, look towards to improving. It's amazing what one negative review can really do to your rating, right? You have one, you know, one star review and your 4.4, you know, star rating drops down to, you know, 3.8 real quick, right? So absolutely. Yeah, that's when you get your entire team to rate you five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, your family and friends get in there. Right. Do you um, do you do any uh, sort of customer satisfaction surveys that, that you drive yourself over and above what what's out there floating about uh, social channels? I yep. personally haven't. Have you done it, Luke? Yeah, yeah. So I've I've done both internal and um, asking for public reviews um, without any prejudice. So just basically sending it out there. If you visited us, would you would you rate us whether they've had a good experience or not? Um, definitely, and done some just internal surveys. And uh, what's the response rate? Are you um, does it get some take up or it or? it does it's 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 quite low. I think actually the initial the more like the automated the the ones that I get the higher response rate is more like um, a direct one to one, mm -hmm. like. Uh, that uh, sort of conversion will be like 80%. Whereas if I send out just like an email, it's probably, you know, 5% maybe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah the, um, the, the other portion to this is um, you're familiar with the net promoter score, right? Which is rank the service out of 10. Would you recommend it to your friends and peers type thing? Mm -hmm. um, so the, the science here, which I'm sure you know, is that if anything, zero to three stars is a very unhappy person. Um, and normally they would then round it down, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and anything seven to 10, that is a promoter. Um, and they would also sometimes round it up, say, this is fantastic. And of course I want to come again and, and tell my friends about it. But uh, often people in the middle, sort of four to seven stars, they're like, no, it's okay. You know, um, I'm not going to even respond because it was yeah. fine, you know? So it's a bit, a bit of a polar exercise uh, very often. Uh, but it does have an impact, obviously, and we, we want to do the right thing for for players um, and be customer led. And I know that uh, both of you are putting a lot of effort into this at your operation. Um, let's look at um, the the deeper science of this. So um, here's some research that was presented at the fifth uh, Golf Innovation Symposium hosted by the USGA, um, not in New Jersey, where they're at home, but in Tokyo. Um, and the lady on stage here is uh, Professor Christina Skunova, who uh, is from Erin Hills and the University of Wisconsin Stout. So what, what they were tasked by the USGA to find out as sort of customer journey, customer experience researchers is exactly that question. What matters in the golf experience? So they, they went and mapped out that there are 1000 touch points in a golf experience um, from deciding to want to go play around, booking online or, or making a phone call, loading your clubs into the trunk, uh, driving through the gate. Each of those are a touch point and they then try to rank them from perfect frustrator to mild frustrator to neutral to delighter to perfect delighter. And, and what they found is that, and that this is really surprising because like we said, conditioning obviously is very important and clubs spend a lot on it, as you would know, looking at your own budgets. Um, it's always how much more money can we find to make it look even better. Uh, but what comes out tops um, in this thousand touch point rating is positive ranger etiquette. So positive marshalling etiquette is the overall top score um, followed by green and open tees, things moving. So positive ranger etiquette, probably because it's so unexpected. And to prove that corrective pace of play actions at the very bottom is the absolute worst frustrator for players. Um, 
so it, it, it seems to be a very polar experience. Um, either somebody can do it really well or somebody can do it really badly and it leaves a mark on the players. And if, if you've ever been told you're slow as a player, then you know what that feels like. And that's a <laughs> red angry face. Uh, so um, are you uh, surprised by this? And, uh, and how, what have you learned in terms of how to handle uh, and, and approach this sort of in general? Do you want me to go, go first? Go ahead. Go ahead, Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so how we approach it here, um, we have a very large property. Um, we're one of the longest golf courses and trickiest golf courses in, um, in London. So we have a lot of property to cover. Um, I hire about 15 to 16 marshals on any given season. And I have two cellular, cellular based iPads that I use. Um, so there's normally a marshal that's at the starting, um, the starting hut, as well as one that's roaming that will have these iPads and they can simply with, without just constantly driving around and wasting time, they're able to just send messages to those that are actually interfering with pace of play. Sometimes people are going slow for sure, but if there's no one behind them, there's no point to hurry them along until it becomes an issue. You can send gentle reminders to you on uh, the iPad software. So you're not actually becoming that like physical presence that some people can find off putting. So that's how we do it here. Um, and my marshals are on average, I would say about 68 to 72 years old. Um, so if they can learn the software, that says something. <laughs> so <laughs> it was a little bit of a learning curve, but there's no issues. It was a two week process for them to really get the hang of it. So very enthusiastic about that. Yeah, that's very cool. I like, uh, we don't have the one where you can send the, the actual message to the cart. So that's, that's really neat. I like that taking that mm -hmm. sort of <laughs> what can be very uh, charging <laughs> for confrontation uh, away yep. is good. That's really cool. Um, I mean, these, these numbers don't surprise me at all. When you look at most of the negative reviews, they do include some kind of uh, Marshall Ranger interaction. Um, so I can, I can see how that would be uh, seen as one of the worst. <laughs> uh, what we've done is um, try to uh, hedge, hedge against that by using uh, Tag Marshall, using the, the Magenta groups and having a sort of uh, routine for our player assistants that go out there. Um, instead of just coming up and being like, you got to move along, move along, you know, you're slow. <laughs> That's, nobody likes that. So, uh, so there's a greeting, there's a gathering of some, some data where they're from is their first time, the new golfers trying to get, establish a little rapport and then basically asking for a favor. You know, if they are behind, can you do me a favor? Can you just catch that group ahead of you? We really appreciate it. All right. So sort of making that first interaction, not really butting heads, but being, being sort of collaborative. Um, Luke, I think that is positive range of etiquette right there. So it helps <laughs> yeah. for your team. Um, what's interesting is that how this juxtaposes because the other really negative sentiment is other people's speed. So anyone in front of me holds me up. I hate it as a, as a player, right? So I'll, I'll also complain about that. Um, and that's what I take away from my experience. But don't tell me that I'm slow. So it is a bit of a conundrum, right? So to have data in this and real information um, obviously makes this a, a much more even playing field. Um, so let's uh, let's look at what you guys have done in terms of the tools and processes that you've implemented to to optimize. Um, Amanda, I think you made a good point in that in the past um, you used to have uh, and spend a, or your team used to spend a lot of time getting out there looking for problems. Um, let's uh, quickly look at what the the tag marshal system um how it works in terms of giving you that data and giving you that oversight um so amanda if i'm not mistaken you guys are using that uh, the gps uh, uh, screen based system correct yes we have the eight inch screens on all of our carts um so like Amanda's mentioned, this sends information to her team. Uh, they've got um, iPads, but uh, she might also have this um, at the office on her PC, which really gives you that uh, sort of Google Maps uh, or Waze style oversight of uh, anything that moves on the course um, and the ability to also send information back, right? Where the, the system updates itself in terms of this is your status and obviously gives you the, um, the standard uh, yardage and things like that. and um, interaction of uh, features. 
but you can it's also really nice to see when message. you're home as well mm. Like, um, like if you're working from home that day and you're wondering what's going on or if you have a negative review, say, about yesterday's round, you can go up and see, okay, were these people really, you know, behind pace and stuff? And you can look at it no problem on your iPhone or your, your cell phone. There's no, um, like, the way that you can view it is very easy. Sometimes, you know, it's a little bit distorted, but no issues at all. Um, yeah, I think that having that line of sight, it, it almost becomes uh, addictive, right? You want to know what's going on uh, and mm -hmm. there's no surprises. Um, Luke, uh, you also, are you 100% cart um, golf at uh, Whiskey Run? We're not 100% cart golf. No, we do have some walkers, but we have the Tag Marshall installed, installed on all our carts. Okay, so so at Luke's facility, it's the what we call the classic tag, which is a uh, installed and hidden away and and uh, they get uh, movement data on all their groups um, from that. Um, we, we're going to show you just now what that looks like. Uh, but uh, maybe just let me jump back uh, one um, if I can. Um, so what do you guys look at? And uh, Amanda, you mentioned uh, checking in on Tag Marshall um, yeah, gets, uh, is, is useful to you. But what do you guys look at to know your business in terms of the status of your business on any given day? What are, what's the tech that, that you are checking in on, on a regular basis? Um, let's start with Amanda again, if you don't mind. For sure. So we don't do any um, dynamic pricing. Uh, we actually didn't even have spring or fall rates just because of the demand for golf in our area has been so high. Um, but for T-Sheet optimization, um, you guys have been really good um, Tag Marshall did not integrate with our Total E system uh, that handles our, all of our POS and T-Sheet management. Um, so they're actually building that integration for us right now, which is wonderful. Um, same thing with Golf Genius, the tournament software. Um, so that you guys were willing to do that, which really helped you know, entice us to make this sale <laughs> to, to integrate you guys. Um, but yeah, I would say T-Sheet optimization by pairing up groups. I do, I mean, Luke can relate probably three or four times a day, you know, in, peak season to make sure you know we can fill those open open times or create some open times there so um once that integration is complete between totally our system and tag marshall it'll really optimize everything so looking forward to that for the spring and um sorry i thought i was muted uh look um on your side what what are the tools that you're looking at you mentioned uh, digging into analytics more and more um, to get smarter around how you run your business. Yeah, so I mean, it has to do with the T-Sheet point of sale, um, point of sale system, just bringing up at all the uh, green fee data for looking for talking green fees and, um, and seeing how our utilization is on any given day. Um, and while in terms of what we're doing, like in terms of knowing our business, what Tag Marshall has been cool. We don't do dynamic pricing, sort of like Amanda, we don't do that. But um, with Tag Marshall, it's been nice to see what um, we've seen in terms of what we've expected our average round should be and what it actually is um, or what it's uh, what Tag Marshall has helped us do. So that's um, seeing the flow of play is definitely key and revenue numbers. Hmm. Sure. Yeah, it, uh, it drives the bus, right? Um, hmm. I remember chatting to Hunky Yoon from the USGA and, and he put it so eloquently. He said, if you're running a golf operation, you're running four businesses, you're running a farm, right? <laughs> Which is highly resource uh, and uh, uh, intensive. Then you're running retail, which is a pro shop, very easy to not make money. Then you're running a restaurant. Uh, restaurant, uh, you need sort of high capacity to, to, to drive a profit. And ultimately you're running a factory now where you are uh, pushing golfers through and, and and that is what drives the bus like it feeds everything else right so you got to do that well because otherwise uh not easy to make the business work um, long term um, but we've all been very fortunate in having had uh, growth in in rounds now the last uh, year or two and um, what's that look like at um at your respective courses what have you seen in terms of increase in in play volume You want me to go? I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've seen about um, a twenty percent increase in rounds. Um, like it's funny, like you said, four. I've I I said the golf course is like eight businesses. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the course itself. You got a retail shop. You got a bar. You got a restaurant. You run events. You do professional services in terms of lessons. You have 
landscaping business. You got e-commerce if you do that. It's just like all rolled into one. And, you know, we have us <laughs> as operators, like trying to manage all this stuff. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, in terms of rounds, we've uh, we've seen a twenty percent increase in rounds played, which um, expected to have basically a uh, especially this year. Um, now that we are like actually measuring <laughs> the rounds played in terms of the time, uh, I thought I thought for sure it was going to be a lot longer than it was. Uh, like we expect basically a four hour round, but our average round was three hours forty five minutes. And I think that has to do with a, with a number of things, and one of them being being tag marshal for sure, and being able to hedge against those uh, slow groups. Um, b- before we look at the actual system and how it helps you um, make sense of what's happening out in the course, Amanda, you guys are really busy, aren't you? We're crazy busy, um, especially with you know the pandemic golf. It's just it's really been crazy. Um, so we've tried to optimize, you know who's playing, when they're playing, and try and figure out what that sweet spot is for tea time intervals um, with social distancing and all of the different, you know, things that we've had to handle with the pandemic that our government has imposed on us. We found that um, 10 minute intervals were great, right? They were working, there's lots of time in between. Um, Our tea shots are extremely hard here. So people oftentimes that are, you know, just playing here one time, you know, we don't have that membership base anymore. It's a lot, it's a lot to handle. So we actually found that on our men's league days, which were frequent flyers, so to say, of people that play here, um, we were able to go down to an eight minute interval which means I know men's league doesn't start until three in the afternoon, but we could handle, you know, going, cutting it down a little bit because the afternoon we would kind of, you know, pick up um, for any of those slow times. And it, it really helped us. So I wouldn't say an overall increase of say 20%, but it certainly helped us on those busier days. Oh, that's brilliant. And I love to hear those optimization stories uh, because it's all incremental, right? So wherever we mm-hmm. can tweak a little bit and get a little better, it actually in the balance has a huge impact. So in the top right um, is Fire Rock and the bottom right is Whiskey Run. Whiskey Run, we can see some blue vehicles. That is the, some of your machine, machinery, right? And uh, your drinks carts and so on, which you've, we're tracking as well. We're mm-hmm. going to talk about that. Um, a little bit later, but uh, um, Luke, you mentioned hedging against the magenta groups. Um, mm-hmm. Do you want to elaborate a bit? Uh, this is just an example because uh, I caught you guys too late in the season, so I couldn't get any live play screen grabs from from <laughs> you guys. I think this might be um, the Dubs Dread course at uh, over in Chicago um, at Coghill. So it's you still know how to manage this course, even though you've never been there. Just looking at this at a glance, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so it, with, with hedging against, basically what we've we've done is um, we put a uh, like basically a forty three inch TV in the pro shop that has tag marshal on it. So as we come in, as my team comes in, um, we're checking that we're seeing where those sort of magentos or potential trouble spots are, and and basically hedging against it, meaning we're going out there and meeting it as opposed to um, the typical what would be would be like kind of driving around not aimlessly but somewhat aimlessly and having uh, whoever that person is their own perspective on what they think slow play is or what they think could be a potential problem which is usually way too late so this way our team's able to be like okay we'll check on those spots see if there is a real issue there or if not and um, before it comes an actual problem um, I, th- I think you're making a great case uh, for the uh, preemptive management right where in the past and without this line of sight you're always going to be reactive and then you may find players that are held up by others so in our world our system calculates this and the orange groups are held up by somebody else red group is out of position but they're not causing any damage and the magenta or the pink uh, those are the head of the snake if you will and green is all good. Um, so very immediately visible where the issues are. Um, and and more often than not, without this, you might be talking to the wrong group at the wrong time. And that becomes a bit confrontational, no matter how nice you put it. Like if they feel like they had to wait on the group in front of them, they let your team know, unfortunately. So one of the things that, um, that we also provide is 
um, a trend on how did they go the last few holes because every single hole on the course has uh, multiple zones in it and and we track uh, the movement across those zones and uh, what we do in the setup and you guys would remember that is we ask you how do you think the course should be played right um and and how does this break down is your par three played in 14 minutes or 15 or 16 or do you have any tough holes um i believe there are some extremely tough holes <laughs> um that uh, that that you may have had and then and then we're running data through that and and checking what's the actual data like and then obviously we're now comparing those um, hole by hole and if somebody's got a negative trend here and they're starting to drop off that is probably a good group to get on top of um yeah any other uh, observations and things that you've learned um and how it how is it empowering your team to um yeah be accurate and uh, and make sure that things are moving for the benefit of everyone right that's really what it's about um amanda on from your side um, when we first set it up, I think you can see it a little bit on Luke's screenshot of Whiskey Creek here at the bottom um, with those action zones. Um, so we would set it up, you know, if you drive off the cart path, you know, in this area and you create your boundaries, um, we really had to optimize those because at first, you know, it was too big of an area. So once we got that down, when it was, you know, a cart path only day, um, we were able to, you know, check those on and it really helped with pace of pace of play, right? Because if you're setting up these boundaries and they're not accurate and people are driving into them, they're gonna get a bunch of warnings and then they're not gonna be happy about that either. So really take the time to do that when you're first setting up a tag commercial. Um, and we did, but you just have to be very careful with where those are. Um, yeah, fair point. And uh, it comes down to drawing accurate, as accurately as possible, right? Yes. And not, not, not the broad strokes. Um, so that's uh, the GPS um, sort of alerts that uh, Amanda is mentioning here. Um, I need to keep us on pace. I know that uh, lots of exciting things to talk about, uh, but ultimately, uh, so what you're doing is um, you're empowering your team to be more proactive and, and, and keep things moving in a positive way because everybody benefits. Um, from In your experience, how have the players ex um, responded? Um, do they take it for granted? And do you get compliments? Um, are there less complaints? Mm -hmm. uh, like what's... Uh, uh, what's the feedback been like and do you feel like it's a good thing for your play experience um, let's stick with fire rock for sure so um we waited until we flipped our our cart fleet so we went from having a club cart to a yamaha cart and when we were looking around for the gps software obviously we could just get it through yamaha um these were fairly expensive units and we had previously done it with uh, club cart and i wanted to change it up so i started researching found tag marshall and the cost was significantly uh cheaper i liked that you know um uh, we were able to use iPads for this. I was thinking it would be a little bit more feasible with the size of our property. Um, so not only did we get new carts, which are awesome, um, but having the new technology was also great. And I know I'm not comparing it to the Yamaha software versus the club car, but with our previous GPS software, there was a lot of like extra information. There was a lot of annoying features um, and just like, crap or filler right so we wanted to eliminate that and just have what the golfer need, needed um so we really tried to you know narrow it down to what what do you actually need to know do you need to know you know all these different pin placements that ah, yes no so we actually ended up just using the center of the green um for the average golfer that's good enough and if you're really serious about it you're probably going to have a range finder or a watch to tell you a little bit um more but yeah we've just tried to simplify sim Simplify things. Um, I know you can sell advertising and stuff with Tag Marshall as well. Maybe we'll go back to doing that, you know, in the future. But for right now, I really just wanted um, it to be as easy as possible, especially with the increased uh, number of new golfers. So, yeah, I think I think it's been really great. A lot of people have liked it, and I mean, they look sleek on the carts. It's not this big, massive unit right in the middle. It's a little eight-inch screen. We put them over the driver's side. Um, I know you can also mount them up top, but I found that this was a little bit easier. So. Yeah, very happy with it. Um, uh, Luke, from your side, uh, you really uh, hit the uh, time marshal way and uh, it's really just an operational tool for you guys. Um, mm -hmm. How have you found the, the player's response maybe a, a little bit um, less direct, uh, just in terms of, uh, well, you obviously want to try and create the best possible player experience mm -hmm. and making sure that things are moving. Um, how's, how's that been received? Yeah, I mean, I think it has to go with the frequency of complaints of slow play. So that that has gone down. So in terms of I don't really hear much 
as much anymore for sure and looking at the data and seeing that uh all what we expected of an average round to be four hours it was actually three hours 45 minutes so it was actually 15 minutes faster than we expected even with the added play which would basically prove the point of why I'm not hearing as much in terms of complaints. So um, I think the player experience, uh, when you're not hearing the, the complaints as much, uh, the frequency, uh, you know, that it's, and you still have that amount of play, you know, things are going good. Um, yeah, brilliant. So this is actual data from FireRock. I think it's uh, July. So in July, your average round time where you're working towards a 425 came in at 413. Um, and it was busy, right? So I think this is a great result for you. And it shows how um, down here is your distribution of pace. So how many of the rounds were quicker or significantly quicker to how many of the rounds were slow. And you are on 80% of your rounds are either fast on pace or within 10 minutes. And only a very small fraction are, are over. And this is a, sorry, this is a great result. Uh, just in terms of the data that's um, helpful sort of in, in planning and reporting, we're breaking down hole by hole, and then the hole itself is broken down into three zones. So normally we can then determine T-box wait times out of this, which is quite important. And we're looking at individual days and how they went, and you can even drill into this and then look at all the T of times on a day um, displayed in one of these graphs. So if you I actually... I just looked it up. Three of those dates out of, you know, the six that are in red were tournaments. So it's really cool to see what's the difference between a tournament day versus your regular, um, your regular day. So a shotgun tournament versus, you know, just your tea times. Um, and it's also interesting to see where you actually maybe have to adjust. I'm looking right now. Okay. Um, out of my 18 holes, I have to adjust a few of them that are par fives that definitely take a lot longer to play. Um, so it's really easy to adjust those times based on each hole. So some homework for me <laughs> and you've got others uh, that play a bit quicker right so they're just uh, mm -hmm. getting this and and it's about it's incremental right because if you can shave a minute or two um uh on eight of your holes that's a considerable difference um and also one of the things that um that's interesting to look at is how do how does our days run in terms of uh, versus goal time um and you mentioned uh, uh amanda that your um, member rounds, or you you call them frequent flyer, if I'm not mistaken, where obviously the players know the course well, you can they will mm. play quicker, so you can then tighten your intervals and get more capacity out. So this is where um, the, the data really helps you, um, yeah, just get more out of your operation and just tweaking. Um, is this something, uh, Luke? I know this is early for you. You've been on the program now for five months. Um, but I would, uh, yeah, I'm excited at what you're going to do in the future. Is this something that you you're starting to look at from a sort of data deep dive point of view? Yeah, yeah. Like I haven't gotten super deep into it, but um, even looking at just the hole by holes and what we expected uh, time length on certain holes, like it, it can be surprising, um, especially on one of our par fives where I gave it, I think. 16 minutes or 17 minutes and it was actually taking a little bit longer. Where a lot of the other holes were a lot lower. I was like, okay. And now I, I'm looking forward to getting more of the, the heat maps of it and seeing where those spots are. And uh, over the next few years, like really kind of being able to drill down is that's, that's what's exciting to me. Yeah, the data is becoming more and more important in, in our operations, right? Especially because the cost for everything. It's a necessity. Up, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, have you seen costs rise? Um, yeah, in in and around the pandemic, and maybe with this increased traffic, uh, Amanda. Yeah, we've noticed a lot more on, say, the turf management side, um, the cost for pesticides, and you know all of our chemicals that we need for the course have gone, you know, thirty three percent, forty percent higher. It's been quite crazy for us. Um, and we just put a bunch of money back into, um, you know, new golf carts, updated our facilities here. So we spent a lot during this pandemic, um, but hopefully, you know, we'll see the returns with all of this new software and new carts and equipment. So mm -hmm. I'm optimistic. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, getting more out of what you're doing. That's that's what optimization is about, right? So um, we want mm -hmm. to uh, quickly talk about uh, operational resource efficiency, if, um, if you don't mind. Um, so Amanda, when you uh, you mentioned that you've got a marshalling or maybe that's what might be broadly called an on-course operation scheme of 16 people, 
mm -hmm. um, that is, is quite a big number. I and mean, do you feel like um, uh, the system is helping you save hours? Um, would you need? Would you have needed more if it wasn't for it? Um, how is, is? Are there any efficiencies that you are making real? Yeah, and I'm sure. I mean, Luke, maybe you guys do the same thing. It's very common. Um, I hire hire um, a bunch of volunteers to become marshals and we trade a six hour shift for a round of golf. Our round of golf here is 85 plus tax. Um, so the golf is the, um, the people that work for me, they're able to use that to play on their own or they can sell their pass to a friend or whatever. Um, so I have a fairly large team of them and it's, it's been great. I mean, I've had to give out less passes to me. It's still, you know, money out because it's costing me a tea time or a spot. Um, so I've actually only had to have, you know, two to three on any given day and for a tournament, same thing. Normally for a tournament, you know, I was bringing in five or six, um, people just because of, you know, the amount of, of golfers on the course. So if I'm able to keep that number down, it's keeping some money in my pocket and less passes on any day means more green fee dollars coming through. So yeah, it's definitely helped definitely helped for sure it's probably saved me about like 30 or 40 percent in passes 100 percent and hopefully time as well <laughs> absolutely that's the, yeah that's the big one yeah and i also noticed we we're talking about having crappy marshals you know and having a poor interaction that way <laughs> um you know if they're not having if you're not having to work as hard because you have this piece of technology you're going to be happier so I, I mentioned you know it's a bunch of um elderly or 68 to 72 year olds that that work for me lovely group of people but it can get annoying if you're constantly going out to you know find problems where if you can just manage it remotely and then only have fewer interactions you're going to have a more positive experience as well yeah i think that's where that's where a lot of the problem previous years has come in it's been they're like i'm a marshal so I got to go find what's going on creating no yeah let problems. me do that for you yeah <laughs> that's I right agree. Yeah, it's key. key. <laughs> uh, so look, from a efficiencies point of view, um, the, the time and saving time and uh, not having to look for issues seem to have. Uh, yeah, it's huge. It is. It's huge. Yeah, you don't have to. Uh, the time savers is, and then not having to run on the course yourself because previous years it'd be, well, let, let me go check. I got to go see what's going on and, and, and let's let's take care of this here and now, now you're not sort of running around aimlessly and it, uh, what we're doing is taking most of the guesswork out of it. Um, so one of the other things that uh, we, you know, we've been in the game for a, a couple of years and we've uh, built a number of integrations with um, you know, the other important systems at a club. Um, Amanda mentioned Totally, um, which is their T-sheet. So that integration is, uh, we're busy building. We've got a few others I know that are working well in Canada, like GG Golf. Um, and one of the most recent ones that we've just uh, concluded and also very grateful to Amanda and the team for letting us be the test is uh, Golf Genius, which is obviously the go-to tournament management software. Um, yeah, Luke, uh, from, from your side, um, I know that you've gone a little bit further than just uh, picking a software. Um, you've actually created mm -hmm. your own. <laughs> uh, what, are, what are the things that are important you feel that um, the sort of point of sale needs to provide? And, and uh, if you'll just uh, give us a, a minute about uh, why this was exciting for you or maybe even essential. Yeah, so I mean, you're, you're probably very aware about it. Like historically, golf has been pretty atrocious at adopting technology. So uh, back in 2019, I kind of had my frustrations came to a head with it all uh, with point of sale T-sheets and a um, mentor of mine suggested uh, Square and Square was, uh, I, I dug into Square, loved it. It was just missing a T-sheet uh, and I was literally ready to go paper and pen and, and go back to paper and pen and just use Square and do that. But uh, luckily I uh, uh, found a young guy by the name of Michael who built a uh, integration or T-sheet integrated with Square back in 2017, but he sunsetted the project and uh, we, I partnered with them. We alpha tested in 2020 and, and when well, we were beta testing 2021, great couple of years to alpha and beta test. <laughs> so um, like in, in terms of what's important is like sort of bridging the gap between 
online brick and mortar, uh, what most call like an omni channel. Uh, I didn't really see that. So once I've jumped into Square, I mean, I've been able to do things in the last two years that I never would have even attempted in previous years without like a dozen different tools. And so um, I'm I'm super happy with the uh, with the direction it's going, and eventually being able to integrate this uh, T sheet into uh, Tag Marshall, which is definitely a priority. No, that's brilliant, and uh, yeah, well done for uh, seeing a, a gap and just going for it, right? So that's an immense learning curve. Um, Amanda, from, is, from yeah. your side, I know that uh, you're, you're running a lot of tournaments. Um, and next season, your players will be able to do live scoring and uh, mm -hmm. see the leaderboard. Um, that That's is cool. Uh, yeah, should, should be also nice for player. leagues. It enhances your experience, right? It makes it feel more personal. Yeah. I think it's really important for a value added, you know, thing. Yeah, it takes a little bit more time here in the shop, but those guys can <laughs> spare a few minutes every day to put in the player names. Oh, for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'm getting a. Uh, a reminder by our friendly player assistant Natalie, who's saying we need to be on place. Uh, so I've got one more screen. Your magenta. Uh, yes, no, it's, it's, I'm the slow player in the group here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the the superintendent tracking is something that uh, we touched on um, earlier. And Luke, I know that uh, you guys do that, and and your superintendent is looking for gaps in the field to get more done. And uh, you also mentioned looking at these heat maps, this is an example, it's actually in FireRock. Um, so what are the sort of things that uh, even in your in your first season, you've, you've started to uh, explore with us? Um, so yeah, so it's really nice to track the superintendent just to see the problem areas that maybe he's maintaining that day. Um, but it's also really interesting to track your food and beverage cart. Mm. Track your food and beverage cart, see if they're actually you don't you want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt but we had a few issues where they were actually missing a few holes just because they were a little bit farther you know out of the way um so really just it's, it's interesting to see where are people going are they you know doing their jobs um you can also put you know tracking on the pieces of equipment uh to see if you know they're taking longer breaks maybe closer to the clubhouse or by the washrooms and you know just overall staffing efficiency so um tracking necessarily isn't always a bad thing it's a good way to save money as well and luke yeah we track um a few of our maintenance vehicles as well as our beverage carts and the beverage cart is yeah, definitely one that comes up where's the beverage cart right? what are they on? <laughs> oh yeah all the time so it's, it's very easy to be like don't worry don't worry just a hold away <laughs> be there in a second um yeah. Okay, um, great. So, so this obviously goes quite deep. Uh, the the heat mapping you can what some of the superintendents use it for. They're like, well, do we have to th um, put as much effort into areas that hardly get any actual uh, traffic on them, or can we maybe save? Um, and other areas that are high traffic, do we have to be more uh, preemptive and make sure that uh, we don't run it into the ground? Right. Um, also irrigation um opportunities around this because if, if we can save money and make good decisions uh, based on data that's uh, always welcome like we mentioned um okay before i get shouted at by by my my marshal uh, i've got one more quick poll to ask uh, the crowd um and if you have any questions then please uh yeah push them into the chat or into the q a and uh, we'll see if uh, amanda or luke um can try and answer them so let's take uh, a minute or two and um, see if I can find that second poll, uh, which is, uh, yeah, Luke mentioned that golf hasn't been very famous in turning towards technology. Um, what would be your answer? Would you consider on-course technology for your operation with something that you're looking into? Does it make sense? And please ask some questions. Let's see if there's a question. Question for Luke and Amanda. Uh, now that you have a good view of pace, do you plan to tighten your gap intervals to create more capacity? Um, uh, Amanda, I think you have already done so. Is there something that yeah. you think you're going to explore? Just on league further? days. Yeah. No, I, I think it, having that sweet spot, not having members, um, just reevaluate who, who you are. We're a destination course that, you know, people have never played here before. Um, sometimes, you know, it's a little bit outside of their comfort zone. So I think a 10 minute is great. And then maybe just eight minutes on our weekdays or afternoons. Um, 
Luc, uh, same question to you. Is is there something tightening intervals, creating more capacity, maybe on your peak days? Is that something that you would uh, you would explore if it was possible? It um, it's not something that I, I my first thought was actually um, increasing prices, so going that route, mm -hmm. and then and then from there, that's when I would look at the intervals, and yeah, if I can tighten them up in some spots, definitely. Um, okay, uh, here's one other question to both of you. Um, ladies first again, um, what would you say your return of investment was maybe like, I don't know, I, uh, one, one of our salesperson, uh, uh, the sales, sales guys always says, well, if you give us a dollar, we give you two back, that sort of thing, right? What would you say is- uh, Yeah, I don't know if I can put a revenue? number to it yeah. just yet. Um, but I can tell you, I saved, I saved big, right? If you compare Tag Marshall with what Yamaha, what club car, they like their GPS systems, you save huge. And it's been really great. You guys have been really great to work with. And I think I've saved enough, uh, patience. That's for sure. I'm not as frustrated <laughs> when it comes to it issues, especially with, um, you know, beta testing the integration, um, you guys have been wonderful. So honestly, I, I can't say anything bad about that at all. Um, Thank you. You're so kind. That's not me. That's the team. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, they're very good. They're very good. So that plays into it as well. <laughs> um, uh, Luke, from your side, savings. Uh, I think, uh, sh yeah, short term, short term, it's time. Definitely um, personally and team wise time that's spent on, on some of these things that the, they would have yeah. to, um, to go after. And I think a long term, more of a slow burn is is looking at the optimization of the golf course and where my superintendent spending their time and where we can kind of leave. And that's where you'll see more of like, I think if like quantify in terms of dollar value, I'll be able to do it over a few years. Um, it's, uh, but short term, definitely time. It's just like. It's, I even had a situation where she, Amanda was talking about you can check it when you're at home. And, so, and this was early on, I think the first couple of weeks we had tag Marshall and I was, it was later, it's getting dark. And I, I was like, oh, I better check. And I seen a cart was out. And I'm like, they're only on the fourth hole. What's going on here? And uh, just a quick message to the guys and they can go out and investigate, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I think we, I think we hedged against a uh, destroyed cart that day. <laughs> and so from yeah. then on, you know, it's very, uh, very uh, on top of things. So it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Nice. That's a uh, line of sight. Um, yeah. We, we, we've had a, a club down in uh, Louisiana and um, same system as yours, uh, Luke. Um, and they had a geofence breach. Uh, go off um, like at three in the morning. So they're like, oh, what's going on? And then the next uh, morning realized that um, a couple of carts had gone missing. Now they're mm -hmm. tracking this way outside the course from Houston to, to Dallas, Fort Worth, which is uh, 700 miles. What? And the investigating officer, the first thing I was like, how can you get a golf cart there so quickly? And then, and then they asked our team, well, clearly this guy needs some help. <laughs> Even asked the <laughs> description because these carts were loaded onto a flatbed, obviously, <laughs> right? Um, so mm -hmm. they actually helped them relocate them and, um, um, and it made the insurance claim so much uh, cleaner for them that um, they couldn't. Uh, or maybe even didn't want to get the carts back, uh, but uh, they, mm -hmm. it's certainly helpful to track and trace. And not that um, that's a problem uh, in, in your neck of the woods uh, so much. Well, the, you know, that? I mean, that's um, these things happen, right? And um, the geofence thing around the golf course was one of the first things I did, like many golf courses <laughs> that have been uh, have been lucky to yep. have the capital to invest in, in, in new things and new carts. That's what we got too. We got a new fleet of carts and, you know, that's always in the back of your head. I don't want them going missing. Yeah, we lock them up, but you know, things can, <laughs> things can happen. And if, and if I can track the, the cart anywhere in the world, that's uh, very unbeknownst awesome. to the person. That's, you know, it's, it's just another, um, it was a wise investment, I think, in, in the safety of, of, the, of our investment. <laughs> Guys, I got to head out. I have another call to get on, but all the best to you. Thanks for having me and best of luck in your future. Thank you, Amanda, for your time. Uh, Luke, you can track Bye, Thanks, Amanda. run south now with, uh, with the tracking. Thanks, everyone, and thanks for all the questions. Yeah. Um, Amanda is so busy. She, she just brushed over that, but she's a, a, a prof at the local um, a, a college uh, teaching the PGA course. So um, 
thank really grateful to her for making a, an hour available and clearly we're over time all right two more minutes okay <laughs> Good, thank you so much for your time and uh we yeah, hope you make you. it on to the pga show um uh, check in what's new and uh yeah, uh, grab a grab a drink together would be great as well. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, thanks, thanks everyone. A lot.